Hey, what is going on, SMT Nation? It's your boy, the SMT. We got to talk about this PC Mag story. This one uh, from the publisher, Sasha Segan, PC Mag. You guys will see it uh, pictured here on the screen. Uh, this is a story that's titled, Tested Verizon's new 4G beats 5G big time. We need to clarify this. This is important because based on this title, it, it may be a little bit misleading. I'm not throwing the spurges at this man not judging this man for anything. That's the title he chose. Let's take a look at the story. So the story says LTE is faster than 5G big time. Okay, so this is not new to the SMT Nation. Anybody that's been on the channel for a while watching my videos, I've been covering this for weeks. All right, we have been on top of this for a long time. Band 48, CBRS 3.5 gigahertz, LTE is straight fire. It is a really fast connection. Range speeds in my testing between 400 and 700 megabits per second. LT for macro sites, we're seeing it from small cells. It's popping up like wildfire all over the CLE. Uh, this guy is seeing it in New York City. Carlos is seeing it in Vegas. Again, popping up all over the place. Anyways, it's general access currently, so it's unlicensed, so it's first come, first served. Band 48, we're seeing Verizon utilizing 60 megahertz of it. And the way that they're doing this is in 20 megahertz sub blocks. So that's three channels by 20 megahertz for 60 megahertz. It's freaking fast. All right. This is a very noticeable upgrade like we see with what T-Mobile did with N41 when they deployed 40, 60, 80, and even 100 megahertz channels. Stuff gets really fast. Anyways, this year you're also going to be seeing Verizon deploy 30 to 40 megahertz licensed PALs of CBRS in certain markets where they have those licenses. That was auctioned over the summer. So the story is not really presented how I think it should have been based on the title. He does a good job of going into detail in the story. You guys can check it out for yourself, but the title is a little bit misleading. The first thing you got to know is that Verizon 5G nationwide is DSS. These are skinny channels of typically LTE type speeds in band 5, band 2, and band 66. Nothing special. It's just for a 5G icon, in my opinion. Some people say that it helps. Some people say that it doesn't. You be the judge when you utilize it yourself. Verizon Wireless Ultra Wideband, on the other hand, is a transcendental technology. It's multi-gig speed beyond 3 gigabits per second in my testing. It is the ultimate capacity layer. The issue as of right now is range and obviously indoor penetration, and CBRS kind of addresses this issue. So, uh, you know, in terms of them using it, it's going to boost LTE devices. It's going to boost 5G devices. Uh, CBRS is obviously going to help them with wider channels because it's LTE. You can aggregate it with other channels like band two, band 66, band five, band 13, and all the pre-existing stuff. So yes, band 48 is faster than band five DSS and other DSS options, but not even remotely close to millimeter wave and ultra wideband, right? So when you think about ultra wideband, we're talking 200, 300, 400, uh, megahertz of bandwidth. So it's tons. In my experience, the CBRS is great. 0.3 to 0.5 mile range on small cells. Band 48 also gets over one mile range on really tall macros. I've tested it at almost one mile range from tower sites that are on rooftops of apartment buildings. So again, faster than DSS nationwide 5G? Yes. Faster than ultra wideband 5G? No. We got to make that distinction. There are different types of 5G. You got to make sure that you clarify it. If you found this video helpful, please do give it a like, rate it, and then share it. Hopefully you can help somebody make sense out of this topic. Do check out his article, check out the story, and let me know what you guys think after you come back to my video. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a great rest of the day, and we'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.